Hey everyone, it's Dr. Glenn Vo, and you know we're on Zoom right now because you know things happen. Uh, there are a little bit of technical difficulties, but we have the guest of honor tonight, Dr. Shepdor. Doc, how you doing? Fantastic. How about you guys? Oh, I'm doing great. And you know what? I'll tell you what. Before we get started, guys, uh, I want to give a shout out to CareStack. They are sponsoring this event. CareStack's your all-in-one solution. If you're looking for a cloud-based software, CareStack is the one you want to look at. Uh, we have a nifty deal. I'll put that in the comments section. So thank you, CareStack. So Dr. Ron, here's the thing. Um, I was looking for someone to just share some valuable information to the Nifty Thrifty group. And uh, you stepped up, but you put something... You put something very controversial there. You caught, you caught my attention. And that was, I want to talk about how you can have a strong perio program, how you can grow a strong practice without a dental hygienist. And I got a few messages and they're like, uh, is this guy for real? I was like, yes, he is for real. He is legit. Um, and so here we are, sir, Dr. Ron. Um, before we jump into that, Let's get some background information. Obviously, I know about you here, but there's a lot of members who have not met you before, have not heard from you before. So let's uh, let's do a little, let's go back in time a little bit to start about the, the beginnings and how you ended up to where you are. So uh, how long have you been practicing? Where did you practice most of your career? And where are you at right now? Okay, so I started 37 years ago in the Chicago Western suburbs, middle-class community. And uh, we, my wife and I, she's an accountant type. We grew a dental business that had three locations, six doctors and a staff of 30. And we did that for 17 years. And I was freaking miserable. Wow. You, you would think that everyone would think that with you, with the three practices, with a massive team, that you would just be golfing with your buddies, just having a great time. And that's not the case, it sounds like. No, I was, uh, I was uh, making a million dollars a year, take home. You would think I'd be happy with that, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that was a good day, right? <laughs> it's not a good day. Guys, don't do it. Bigger is not better. I lived it. I breathed it. I could tell you all the problems. There isn't anything I haven't seen with that model. I mean, if you're cut out for it, that's great. But I didn't go to school to worry about profits and be an administrator. That isn't where my heart was. It didn't feed my soul. Um, I just felt nothing but aggravation and things that I didn't like to do. The money didn't matter. I ended up blowing money anyway, but money comes and goes. What we spend on money just doesn't really matter. And so I had to grow up. It, it took me a little longer. It took me 17 years to realize it. Money was still important. I still need X amount of dollars that I needed to live on to support a lifestyle. So what I did is I developed a series of questions and did a lot of soul searching and said, okay, what do I want? What's important to me? What kind of procedures do I want? What kind of people do I want to see? What kind of hours do I want to work? The things that really were important to me. And so this list of questions, which I use now in my coaching classes with Dennis, um, we use the same questions. And so I developed a practice based out of those questions. And I started, I didn't know how I was going to do it. I, I sold that business uh, for a lot of money and basically financially retired. So I didn't have to really worry about the money. I go, I'm just going to set up something that I enjoy doing. And so I set this practice up exactly what was right for me. I never wanted to be rushed. I never wanted to be in a restorative procedure and someone give me a, a roll their eyeballs and say, hey, there's got to be a, you know, there's a hygiene, hygiene check. check. That would drive me crazy. <laughs> I mean, past crazy. I mean, that was just, it was unacceptable to me because it took all my concentration to try to do the best job I can for that patient. I did not want to be disturbed. So I said, well, in, if I don't want to be disturbed, there's no hygienist, there's no hygiene checks. I want nobody else in the office. I don't want 15 rooms going and all the hoopla. I can't handle that. It, I just don't like it. So that was good for me. So I started doing this and I, I started saying, okay, um, how am I going to clean teeth? Well, what we came up with was certified dental assistants mm -hmm. um, doing the last 30 to 40 minutes of the hygiene appointment. And I would do the first 30 minutes where basically I do the ultrasonic cleaner, light hand scaling, perio charting. Uh, I would take uh, with my SoPro camera, if you guys don't know what that is, get one, get one for each operatory, but it picks up early decay. And, you know, it's an intraoral camera. So I put problems on there and I would find 
two to three times more dentistry spending 30 minutes with the patient than most dentists do when they go for their one minute hygiene check. And don't give me that crap. You guys don't do a one minute hygiene check. I've been, <laughs> a, I've been on a lot of offices and I'll tell you the yeah. last office I was in, I went and followed the doctor around all day. That day he found six, $6,200 worth of uh, stuff to do. I found $28,000 worth of dentistry to oh my do. Gosh. And I followed him right after. That's how much dentistry in one day was missed. Dr. Ron, I'm going to ask you this because, uh, you know, uh, I had a member just message me here. He's doing a startup. He's actually doing all his own hygiene and he was thinking about maybe getting a hygienist. So someone who is, has, doesn't have a hygienist right now, right? It sounds like right. that they should just, they're ready to go using your system because they don't have a hyg hygienist yet and they, their practice is still new enough that it could have a certain culture, have a certain system. What would you uh, advice you would give to this young doctor? Great advice. Okay, if you want to follow my system and what I do, not I'm no guru, I don't know everything, I, but I know my system. And this system is you can comfortably make, I could comfortably make a million dollars a year in collections and have a 50% or lower overhead. Now, if you like those numbers and you yeah, don't want I to- I like those numbers. They're easy to get. I have no special talent. I do above average dentistry. I try my hardest every day. I concentrate one patient at a time. My heart goes out to every patient. I love every patient that comes in the door. Some I love to see come and some I love to see go, but I love them all. Um, if you have that mentality, I could teach you how to do this system with certified dental assistants, a daily monthly uh, bonus program that people get very enthused about. Um, I, I've ran this thing with three um, certified dental assistants. That's it, that's all the employees I had. I had an outside marketer. If you want her name, she's great. She kept me out of all the plans. I'm not involved in any insurance and never have been. Uh, in a middle-class community, this is not a wealthy community. And then I have an offsite, um, I don't wanna call her office manager, kind of a CFO, gives me reports, does the bills, just the money part of the practice. But three people, imagine this, three people in the office, one person that you're treating at a time and you're doing it at a pretty leisurely pace. And you're bringing home a half a million a year. What's wrong with that? It sounds great. And actually, Dr. Beckford just made a comment here. She says two, two uh, certified dental assistants, expanded dental assistants equals one hygienist. Do you agree? Um, I, I don't know. I really don't work with hygienists. I love hygienists. I know some outstanding hygienists that I really wish I could have worked for. But my lifestyle and the way my, off, my, my day went was so much more important to me. I had to keep my marbles, right? I wanted, I wanted to make sure I lasted 37 years. I got to tell you, after I figured this out, that last 20 years in practice, I loved it. I loved being a dentist. I did not like being a dentist the first 17 years. And most of you guys now, from what I see, is more and more dentists are hating the profession. And it's because of the business model that I don't know why you guys are working like that. It just doesn't make any sense. You, are you talking about the uh, roller skate dentistry that most of us have to do where we're skating yeah. around from room to room? But why? Why are you doing that? Who says that you have to do that? And that's why I'm looking right now. We have a lot of people that's on watching the stream right now. Guys, if you have any questions, please post it in the comment section. You can also, if you don't want anyone to see your question, you can message it to me. I have a lot of questions that people are messaging, but type in the comment section. And so we can talk to Dr. Ron about that. And so Dr. Ron, I'm going to ask you this. So uh, we just had this question here. Um, if you're spending so much time doing hygiene, is that taking you away from the high dollar procedures that you could be doing while someone else could be doing the cleanings? Oh, good question, right? But at the end of the day, I'm bringing home a half a million dollars and you're not. So who's right and who's wrong? True. And you're, and you're, and you're, um, and you're not as stressed. Oh, and you're okay. not skating. And, you're, and, and you have a really small staff, actually. The skating around, you need to hire a lot of people for that. Why would you do that? So know. logic, here's the logic. <laughs> here's the logic because we're smart and we go with logic. This is who we are. Logic tells you you're wasting time go do the higher end procedures. Mm -hmm. What I'm telling you, you did not build a rapport with the patient. And where do you make your money? 
You make your money on the exam, finding dentistry. And yes. you, guys, you guys are doing none of that. You're not spending any time on the exam. I'm spending 30 minutes. Who's going to find more work? Oh, yeah. You, you can actually, I'm sure, do you, do you while you're doing the, the cleaning, uh, you're still talking to the patient. Yes. You're, you're, you're presenting the treatment, essentially. Yep. That's all I'm doing. And that's such a fun half hour. You're building rapport. You're talking about their dog in between. You're talking about their kids and grandchildren. It's a fun 30 minutes. And I snap a few pictures on what's going on. Now, new patients are different, right? We have to do a comprehensive exam and, and all that sort of thing. I like it too, because I get to do Velscope, which is an advanced oral cancer screening. You know, 99% of the dentists still don't even do that. And the ones that don't think, oh yeah, it's not accurate. Well, how did I catch a half a dozen cancers on that? My eyes didn't. What do you mean it's not accurate? That's bullshit. It's, you're just making an excuse because you just are too lazy to use it. We're still not doing an, an oral cancer screening with Velsco. That's because you guys are too busy on one minute hygiene checks. <laughs> That's the truth. It's oh the gosh, I love that. Now, just for those who are just jumping on and guys, if you have questions, type in the comments or message me. I know I'm going to get to your other questions here, but I got to go in order. Uh, so just type it in the comments well, or send it to me. Before the um, question, I want to blow their shoes up. Do you want me to blow everybody's pants off now? Uh, uh, yes, uh, but let me, so we have uh, Dr. Durgam. She has a question and that okay. is, what other high production procedures do you do besides hygiene and how do you schedule with your particular system? Oh, perfect. Okay, so let's say on the exam, we find a couple crowns to do. For me, typically a couple hours. I would put aside for that. Patient would go up, make an appointment for two hours. When they come in next time, I would see them for two hours and nobody else. And you say, oh my gosh, how could you do that? Because I only had 600 patients. You guys have one, two, 3,000 patients. <laughs> yeah. Why, why would you do that? That's craziness. Slow down. You only need to treat 600 people very well. Do the numbers. Assume they come in twice a year and you got denture patients in there. You know, just do the numbers on it. It just makes no sense how our whole profession got talked into that business model when I, I did exactly the opposite and I've got a lifestyle and an income that every dentist wants. It's crazy. Now, let me ask you this. This is my own question. So uh, how many years did you practice in this system? I think you, you said... Um, uh, you said earlier, but just remind me again, how many years did you practice in this system and how many years were you in the crazy system that most of us do? Okay. So I practiced this system from day one. I've never had a hygienist. When I had the six doctors, it was craziness because when you get two doctors in each facility mm -hmm. and I had to administrate it, uh, 30 people, I mean, all heck is breaking loose every day, no matter what. So even though I had an office manager, a lot of it still rolled out on me or my wife. And if it rolls down on my wife, it's gonna roll back on me. <laughs> so, you know, you're managing a lot of people. You've got three properties that I own, uh, all the equipment, all the headaches that go with that. Ultimately, you could say, I want an office manager, I want this, but dude, you can't be practicing full time and doing reconstructive dentistry and trying to administrate that. It just doesn't work. I agree. I learned that the hard way. I thought that, uh, you know, I can kind of juggle everything, but once you have multiple practices, you're going to have to designate some time. That, that's a full-time job almost uh, just managing and leading the teams and the practices, uh, much less uh, trying to do some dentistry in between as well. Yeah. So we've always had that concierge service, if you will. Now it used to be looked on that, oh, the dentist is just beginning or he's so bad, he doesn't even have a hygienist. He's just a hack. Yeah. I, I took it the opposite way. And I said, this is so much better care that what doctor spends 30 minutes uninterrupted with a patient anywhere? Try to get that from your physician. Try to get that from any other dentist. You can. Mm -hmm. So they get to actually know their dentist. This is not for everybody. You know, if you're an introvert, if you're not a people person, um, you know, you have to have a certain personality. You got to actually enjoy people and enjoy joking around with them and enjoy educating them and enjoy seeing them get better. And out of that became an advanced perio program. I was on the front cover of Dentistry Today. 
I was the first dentist that started to take blood tests on our, our, our perio protocol and produce and prove that we uh, reduce C-reactive protein levels. Um, go back and look at that front article. That was back in like 208. I've been doing this a long, long time. Our perio program is better than anything a hygienist. Okay, so so now so now you piqued my interest. Sorry, guys, you're gonna have to wait. I'm gonna get my answer, questions yeah. answered. Let's talk about your perio program there. It's so awesome. you were saying you're 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 you you. You you did a blood test essentially to to go over. Let's let's start. Let's talk about the whole thing here. Okay. Because, uh, Mary, and uh, guys, I'll get your questions. But uh, Dr. Ron, he's he's dropping some knowledge today. He's definitely getting my interest here. Oh yeah. But let's talk about that perio program. Okay. Then. So here's the perio program, and this is why. Um, and nothing against hygienists. There's a few hygienists that get this, but they're not being taught it. They don't practice it, with the exception of a few. And those few, I love you dearly, and you're very good. And you know who you are. Um, okay, so the perio program, everything starts with perio, right? I was, I like reconstruction, I like adult dentistry, but the perio has to be in great shape for me to do everything. So um, I used to send the periodontist, to, and we used to joke, Dr. Slice and Dice, sorry periodontist, but the patients would never come back to me. I mean, they were really pissed. So I said, I got to develop a better system. So we kept it in house and, you know, we got, um, scaling and root planing and ultrasonic cleaners. What I realized is that you don't um, have to scrape the dickens out of teeth. A warm water ultrasonic cleaners with some closest in it, it kills the anaerobes. Do it slowly over three or four appointments, spread a couple of weeks apart, put them on better home care products. Again, that, a water flosser and in, inner dental cleaners. Forget the floss, don't even mention floss. Who's going to floss? 5% of the patients. I, I don't care if you guys don't like to hear that. It's the truth, 37 years of experience, but they'll do the inner dental cleaners and the water flossers. The other thing that the reason this works so well is because I address the systemic component of perio, which is the underlying nutritional, uh, nutritional deficiencies and the underlying medical issues. So, so what I did to prove that this protocol worked and how well it worked is um, the government issued me a CLIA license. That's a C-L-I-A. It's the same license a hospital has to take blood tests. So we developed uh, a finger stick test. It was 99% accurate. We tested, I had a lot of fun with this, homocysteine, cholesterol levels, uh, C-reactive protein, uh, A1C levels. It, we tested a bunch of things. And what we found out was 14% of my perio patients had an underlying um, diabetes and didn't know it. 14%. So Dr. Jenko, about five years after I published my studies, did his own studies, came up with the same thing. I think there's a scientist in Norway or somewhere up there. He came up with the same thing. Try it yourself. But, you know, hygienists are treating diabetic patients and thinking that they're going to get well, 14% of them. 68% of them will admit to you when you ask them, do you have poor average or uh, good eating habits? They have poor average. So we invented a dental supplement called Pharmaden, that's P-H-A-R-M-A-D-E-N.net. Go look it up. Um, we develop what are the common nutritional deficiencies and we gave that to them in a very high absorbing form. We went to Loma Linda, did a double blind study on periodontal patients. No, no supplements ever done that in history because the other ones don't work, they know it. We did that, we, we significantly reduced the pocket depth weighting and plaque, so we, incorporate that with every patient and we send them for a physical if it's been over a year. That's the component that they're missing and that's why we can keep people well. And let me ask you this, as far as, you know, um, compliance and when you bring this up to all the patients, uh, obviously it, it helps that you're spending that much time with them, right? Yeah. To actually explain this, but uh, in your career, uh, br bringing this up to your patients, I mean, did you get a lot of brushback? Was there a lot of, Not at hey, all. You know, you're just my dentist and what is this business? Not at all. Okay, so there's a specific way. We, we had to hone and get a script. It took me about a year to develop the script and I'd be happy, you know, you, you want me to coach you on this, I'd be happy to do it, but the script works every time. And so basically what it is, is you go with your probe or ultrasonic cleaner in the upper right quadrant and you inform the patient, um, we're gonna do a periodontal exam or gum exam now and there should be no pain, no blood, no pus. Don't say exudate, they don't know what that is. So you know what happens, right? You go ahead and probe, you don't have to go hard and you go on the eight teeth and um, you know, go from the distal buckle 
uh, means you'll on AT, put it on a big TV screen. I had like a 50 inch screen hung from the ceiling right in front of them and put a still picture on. Well, there's pus, there's blood, there's, and <laughs> so what you want to hear from the patient is, ooh, if you do that, you never have to sell it because they already yeah. are buying, they have a problem. I go, go ahead and just rinse out that pus and that blood. So I, wow. shame on me, I have to do that. Hey, but, but it's true. And, and that's where you bring that SoPro camera in. If, they, if you see some like old amalgams and whatnot, just, you know, it's all visual there. You know, I, I, the thing is, is that um, at one point in time, every single dentist who has had a practice for a while did their own hygiene. They, they went, they, they had a very similar practice like you. And then yeah. somewhere down the line, myself included, uh, my team just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And I'm pretty, I mean, look, this is Nifty Thrifty Dentist. I'm pretty good at like keeping my, my, my overhead low and everything lean. But I mean, yeah, I, I'm just thinking about, it, it's so hard to, to kind of switch that around. And, and th this yeah. goes into the next question here. Uh, this doctor says, I have been looking for a hygienist. My hygienist left after COVID. I've been looking for a hygienist for the yeah. past two months. I've been doing my own hygiene. Okay. So what? So Dr. Ron, what would you say to this dentist who's still looking for a hygienist right now, can't because of what's going on in, in, uh, in, in our world right now with the COVID and she's frustrated. What would you say to her? Well, let's get two certified dental assistants and you go, I, I can't find them. I can't. Well, what you do is you go to the service industries, go to the Starbucks, the lady that's serving you, that's got the best personality and knows how to serve people. Say, how would you like me to double your income and you work in a professional setting? Go and train them, get them certified. It, it's, what's it gonna take, a few months? They would be so grateful. You put them on a daily bonus and then a monthly bonus. They're doubling, maybe even two and a half times their salary, dressing in a uniform, working in a doctor's office. They love you. I got three people that I, you could offer them double the money and I don't think they would have left my office. Wow. They were that grateful. That. And, and we made such a strong team because they were hard workers that weren't getting anywhere. Now with me, they were getting somewhere. Yeah, I love that. Now, this other doctor is asking about the um, the uh, cancer screening. Did you charge for the cancer screening or was it part of the exam? When I do a comprehensive ex exam on a new patient, it comes with it. Okay. Then once a year, my regular patients, um, I would word it as um, we have a an advanced cancer screening tool. And I turn on the light because a lot of them think, you know, I'm going to poke them or something. I go, I shine this light around and it'll detect early cancer before my eyes can. And it's a $39 test. Would you like me to do it today for you? Um, I would say 50% of my patients would say yes once a year. Now, I'm going to, can I just blow your socks off here? Yes. I'll blow, okay. So you say, well, why is that just a big deal that all you guys aren't doing, by the way? Okay. Let's just say for argument's sake, an exam cleaning in Florida is $200 just for rounding up mm -hmm. purposes. Okay. And I'm in the room for 30 minutes. Well, guys, that's $400 an hour. Now tell me what you're making on your restorative. Most doctors, that's what they're making on their restorative. Well, what would you rather do? Break your back on, on filling number 14 and 15 and, and standing on your head? Or would you rather do this? <laughs> you tell me, same money. Now it gets better. Okay, so let's say that you throw in some bite wings. That's 80 bucks, but I'm not gonna be in the room and I could look at those later. Mm -hmm. So now we're at $280 for a half hour. Well, that's four, 460 an hour. Oh, okay, I didn't do any more work. Let's throw a bell scope in there. That's 320 for a half hour which now means $640 an hour. Let's see, you probably do that when you make crowns and do grunt work and swim through blood. Oh, okay. Well, let's, let's say you got really lucky and your SoPro camera picked out a small cavity and there's a way that the preset the people, patients to you know, tell them that. But let's say you do a composite, a posterior composite for two, 210 during that 30 minutes or God forbid you might run into 35 minutes. Well, now that's at $530 for 30 minutes, which is $1,060 an hour. Duh, why are you guys not doing this? And, and you're not having to uh, skate around. You, you're sleeping. You're watching TV with the patient. You're visiting with them. <laughs> why? why? 
Yeah, no, no. It, it, it's so funny when you break it down like that. It just makes sense. And I think like, I'm going to have to really sit down and, and think about it. I might have to keep messaging you. Uh, but guys, if you, you have any you questions, need, you need a coach. Type, yeah, type in the comments section there. Ask Dr. Ron some questions there. I mean, really, I should have changed this to maybe going back to basics because really it, it's bringing back, you're bringing back uh, memories of when, you know, when I started my practice and, yeah. and literally that's what I did. And I spent a lot of time with my patients. Wasn't it fun? Them. Uh, you know what? I mean, it was because I could do a lot of same day treatment, right? Like, oh, you already did it. Yes. What if, I want to throw this out here. Someone just brought this up. Um, And uh, his question is, okay, I have a new associate. I can't, you know, they're not, their schedule is not, you know, too busy right now. So they could do some hygiene. Could I put them on this special program? And I could just keep doing, keep skating on the other side. As long as you get him a certified dental assistant, right? He's not going to be mm-hmm. polishing teeth and t- showing them how to floss, which yeah. you shouldn't do anyway. But, you know, my, my, let's talk about a CDA for a second and the value that she has. Sure. Let's say she gets $20, $25 an hour. What's she going to do for that? Well, um, polish teeth, fluoride, x rays, break the room down, financial treatments. Um, she could take alginate impressions. Um, you know, she's so valuable in the stuff that she could do. Well, you, you really need that person. You really need me to build the rapport and diagnose, right? Those are the two important things that I've got to do in, during that session. So I'll do my gig and then get out of here and let her do everything else. The product sales, we had $4,000 a month in product sales, $2,000, $2,500 of that was profit. That was my rent. I didn't even sell the products. She did. <laughs> Now, let me ask you this, Doug, because someone's asking me this, is that your practice, was it a fee-for-service practice or did you, take, did you take PPOs? Well, I'll never be discount my services unless it's on an individual basis. So when you say fee-for-service, let's define that because there's mm-hmm. a lot of miscommunication about that. People can come to me even though they have PPO insurance. I'm out of network. Right. So let's say that, let's redefine that and say I'm an out-of-network dentist. So I could, I would give them the option. They could pay their portion, which we always overestimate it because I, I like sending money back to the patients, sure. not bothering them for $10 and $20. Um, the other thing I would do is um, people with no insurance, which is 50% of America, I would present uh, comprehensive dentistry and the best dentistry and then show them in stages and monthly payments, how they can afford it. It's easy. That's our job. And they trust us because I've built a rapport with them. Now, my financial person will go in detail, but I'd always talk about the fees and show them how they can afford it. And hey, don't worry about it. We'll split it in the monthly uh, things. You get $1,000 of insurance. You said you could afford $200 a month. We'll do three grand a year. Hey, in four years, we're done rebuilding your mouth for the rest of your life. Yeah. And so, you know, there's, there's a doctor made a comment here. And yeah, I think we just answered your question here. And that was uh, Dr. Weiss is saying, is this kind of predicated on an out of network fee for service model in, in network fees, they don't add up as well. And yeah, I think you just answered it. I mean, if, if you're, if you're, if you're discounting your services by like 50%, it's really hard. Why would you guys Uh, do that? Why? You know, yeah, I think I think a lot of people are just worried that, uh, you know, maybe they, they want the patient flow there. They want the patient okay. flow there. Right. But That's... but I think I think what you're saying and 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 look, you, you just put out some really simple math that most of us know and you just added it up right there. <laughs> right. Because if you don't have the extra overhead of a big, massive team. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's one thing. Um, the hygiene department is a huge you know, a huge yeah. salary right there. Um, I mean, you had a team of, you, it sounded like you said, including yourself, it was like four people. Three and me. Yeah. As opposed to, um, you know, other practices, if they were doing the other system, it would be double easily, if not more. I talked to a dentist today that had to do two and a half million dollars worth of dentistry to make 500,000 which isn't, uh, I mean, he was bragging and sticking out of his chest how he's doing so much better than me. I go, well, yeah, two and a half million, man, you're moving. And that's an individual doctor, that's cooking. He goes, yeah, I'm just stressed out. My back's killing me. And you know, he's half my age. You know, this guy's like an old man. I'm an old man, but he was older than I was. 
And I go, dude, I'm doing a million and a half a million. Why wouldn't you follow this system? And he wouldn't budge. Yeah. I go, you're, you're just, you're, you're just not smart. <laughs> yeah. So we have a question here, doc. Um, he wanted to know what hours and days do you, or what's your, what was your normal, what, when you were really cranking it out, what was your normal schedule? Were you, I mean, were you working every day? Were you working four days a week, three days? What was your schedule like? Seven to four, Monday through Thursday. Fridays six off to, for golf. Six, oh yeah. Six to eight weeks. Well, golf with my wife, six to eight weeks vacation. Um, and I've met my wife when I was 15. She was 16 and she's still my best friend, by the way. Oh, that's awesome. That's so yeah. awesome. Well, that, that's another Facebook live right there. You're going to have to tell us what the secrets are. That's another one as well. Hey, maybe the secret is, is not running yourself ragged at the practice. So when you got home, you were uh, pleasant to be with. Right. And then of course you had that extra day off and you weren't just coming home, just beat. I, that was another reason, you know, with children, um, and my wife and me, and you can't help to bring home some of that stress. There's a lot of stress in running a big practice and, and trying to produce big numbers. And you're looking at the end of the day going, that's all I'm making? Why, why? You guys don't have to do that. Go down to 600 patients, lose two thirds of your, your patients. I don't care. But before you drop the PPOs, let's market, get fee-for-service patients and patients that are interested in good care get them started, and then let's start dropping one plan at a time. This might be a two or three or four year process mm -hmm. to transform so you don't lose your pants here, but we can switch you over to a practice that doesn't drive you nuts. And, and Dr. Ron, uh, this is something I, I talk about all the time in the group, so I, I'm really excited to have uh, you kind of talk about this, but at the end of the day, right, people get so hung up on, I, I produce this much. So right, what? they get hung up on it. They're like, I produce, look at this, right? But then, oh, you got this expense, you got this expense. Ex what actually went into your pocket, right? Like, and, and so I want you to talk about that because the, the I think a lot of times people are so focused on that, like, hey, I got this huge facility, I got this many people, I got I did this much production, but at the end of the day, it's what actually goes into your pocket. Can you just kind of talk about that because? You're really good with the numbers in there. And I think a lot of younger docs need to hear this. Okay, guys. Um, for me, it was controlling my ego. My ego really ran me for 17 years. And it's not going to end up good. You know, I had the Rolls Royce, had four homes. I mean, I was living the high life. I don't think there's many dentists that were doing much better than me in the country financially. And I was probably one of the more miserable ones. So, you know, I had to come to the realization that stuff is stuff and it's not that important and what truly made me happy and money still was there, but it, it's certainly down the list. Um, you know, I'm, I'm driving my convertible here in Florida. I think it's a Buick that I paid 30 grand for. I would drive that over my Rolls Royce any day. <laughs> You know, you just have to find things that are much, much cheaper that are that give you as much or more pleasure. And that was a big key for me. And I think it's because we starved for so long. You know, we were eight years in school, oh, yeah. hung, hungry, right? So it's like the guy going through the desert, you give him some water, he can't stop drinking. And, and it was kind of feeding my ego. And it was, it was feeling good for a while. But you know, that ego, you can never feed it enough. It's a never ending monster. And Dr. Ron, I want to talk to you. I want you to bring this up because you had the multiple practices. You had the huge team. I'm actually, uh, what's what's really ironic is I'm actually bringing on another guest the next day talking about you need to open a bunch of more practices. But I think it's really important. I think it's really important that you give this perspective because I think a lot of times young dentists, they think that I, I need to have multiple practices. I need to have the massive teams. I need to to do that so I can show everyone that I'm, I'm actual a success. Well, I need you, your perspective there of, you know what, it's, that's not necessarily the case for everyone or the majority of us. It's like the guy that has to have the Ferrari that he spent $2 million for, but he owes 1.95 on it. <laughs> I mean, what, what, I guess it's good for your ego, but at some point in time, as you get older, um, your realization is going to hit in and you go, what am I doing? What makes me happy? 
your ego ego is bad for your health it's awful for 17 years i was guilty thank god i got off that addiction so dr ron let's do this so a bunch of people are jumping on guys if you have any more questions uh put it in i answered most of your questions but type in the comments section we can we can keep on going here but i want dr ron, i want you to just kind of lay out like the blueprint and guys we'll if you want more information, we'll talk about that. But I want you to lay out the improvement. So someone right now who's listening right now, okay, yeah. they're like, you know, I'm going to give it a shot because maybe their hygienist didn't come back after COVID. Maybe they are just tired of skating and doing all that. Yeah. If you were just walking into their office and saying, okay, doc, you got to do these five things or these four things. You got to do that now. And that's going to get you on the right path until you can get a hold of me later. So give that advice. Uh, what can they start with to just kind of go towards your system so that they can have less stress in their life? Okay, so there's two ways to go. Uh, one way is, I always tell this to my grandson, you want the hard way or the easy way? Okay, so, <laughs> so the hard, cheap way, which a lot of you guys are, I know, Dennis, you guys are just cheap as hell. You're, you're going to try to figure it out yourself. There's a lot of scripts that I figured out that took a long time to develop. Um, there's going to be a lot of questions come up that you're not gonna figure out. So the hard way is figure it out yourself. In three to four years, you'll probably figure most of it out. Yeah. Hire a coach and get it done in 90 days. You go, wait, yeah. wait, what do, what do you mean 90 days? Okay, January 4th, I sold my last practice and quit practicing and sold the practice to two doctors. They came in from corporate dentistry, making 180,000 a year, whatever it is. And I show them my tax returns and they go, you just can't do this. These tax returns got to be false or something. <laughs> I go, I'll tell you what, you guys put a nice down payment on and it's non-refundable. And I will teach you 90 days before you buy it. We, we will even line up cases. So when you buy it, you are already going to make a ton of money. And say, they laugh. They, they just thought, okay, great. And I go, if I, if I am full of it, um, hey, you walk away and you got some coaching. Yeah. So they went ahead and uh, we did it every day. They were with one of them were with me. One was with me two days, the other one, two days. And in 90 days, um, they actually in January and February, not March and April, and then May, June and July were producing more every month than I ever produced there on wow. my system. Wow. And these guys are they are still using the system exact system really yes wow. they're using my uh marketer and my outside cfo also so they got my team on top of it wow yeah these guys just walked into a really good thing all set up for them well you know when you sell a practice for a million bucks uh, it kind of you know is that a good thing i don't know a lot of guys are like wait, wait, you only got two chairs and you don't even use the third. Yeah. What am I buying here? I go, a system. But but there's only 600 patients. Yeah, you're paying a lot of money for that. <laughs> wow, wow, I love it, I love it. Okay, so um, before we kind of go into how people can work with you, how they can get a hold of you, um, just walk me through a, a, a new patient what you do from, you know, the patient coming in, you shake their hand, greet them to just going through whatever treatment they need. What, what, how does the normal flow work? Oh, you're going to love this. Okay. So new patients, that's a whole different animal. So they come in and we uh, um, walk around the desk, the receptionist shakes their hand, well, maybe elbow, bump elbows today. <laughs> and uh, we give them a little bag, a little gift. It has a bunch of goodies in it. So, that, you know, oh, geez, you walk in the office and get a gift. Really nice looking spa looking black bag. And we give them uh, a little tour of the office, a little history in the doctor. And then they sit. There's an area that we have in between operatories. It's a pushed out center that has two really nice, fancy looking chairs and a nice table. And we sit them there. We don't sit them in the operatory. Hmm. And there's a nice little lamp there and um, pendant lights. And so I just uh, come in and, and they introduce me. I'm in a white shirt, cufflinks, silk tie. Uh, I don't have any, you know, cardiac surgeon scrubs or, you know, <laughs> hats or anything. I'm not a cardiac surgeon. And I uh, say, oh, how can I help you? And I just shut up and listen. And the reason I listen and keep writing is because I never have to sell them dentistry. 
because whatever they tell me to do, well, that's what I'm, that's what I'm going to do, right? Now I'll show them some other things along the way, but I never have to sell anything that way. And I wrote a book on this, how I took my practices from basically 250,000 to a million, basically overnight with these techniques. And you could buy the book. Now what is the book's name? I wanna, I wanna make oh. sure, and um, we'll put that in the comments as well. What's the, what's the book? Better Service, Better Dentistry, Better Income. And you better could Service, buy it. Better Dentistry, Better Income. Okay. Yeah, you, you could buy it at pharmaden.net, P-H-A-R-M-A-D-E-N.net. So that's, that is a secret of this system that you have to get. You got two ears and one mouth, right? You're supposed to listen twice as much as you talk. And that's what I learned too. I learned it by accident one day. But I learned to listen to people and just ask a simple question and let them talk. People love to talk about themselves. And I go, okay, is there anything else? Is there anything else? And then if I see a discoloration, I go, well, are you worried or concerned about maybe the color of your teeth or the missing teeth? Does, does that bother you? And some people it doesn't, that's okay. I just keep asking questions and write. I don't even sit them in a the chair. I want to interview them to see if I got a nut job, right? If they're nuts, I say, you know, yours is a little advanced for me. I think the guy across the street can help you. Yeah, because you know what? Your sanity and your happiness is worth more than the money. Way more. Yep. Yeah. So I, I've, I learned that a lot later in my career, but now I'm, I'm very, I'm okay with just letting people go somewhere else. Yep. Say, you know, thank you for seeking me out, but I, I really think this case is just too, a little bit too advanced for me. So once you talk to them and once they're ready to go into the operatory, uh, walk us through um, the op, you know, once they're in the op. Okay. So we agree that if they want to go forward with treatment and I like them. And so we hop in the chair and I do an exam and I do the intraoral camera and show them some pictures, show them around. I go, so after they see what's going on, I go, obviously there's some problems in there. I don't know the history. I don't know if there's cavities in between the teeth, uh, infections. So I, I need to take some pictures. I need to take some x-rays. So why don't we do this? Um, my assistant, my nurse will come in and she will take the proper x-rays. And if, now if I have time, it just depends on how my time is going. If I've got time, she'll take them and I'll come back in and talk. Mm -hmm. Or I'll say, um, okay, I'll have, I need time to, to study these. I'd like to get you back with a consultation. And then we'll talk about treatment. And do you need to bring your spouse with when we talk about treatment or anything? Because half the time, you know, if this is thousands of dollars. I don't know if I go spend a few thousand dollars, I better talk to my wife first. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there better be at least a discussion. So they're going to come back at a different appointment then? Sometimes. It just depends okay. on how the interview and the questions are going. Sure. Sometimes these people start crying. They start telling you everything. They want to talk for an hour. Mm -hmm. I let them talk. I mean, you know, and that's, I think that's part of the secret. You say, well, it's wasting time. I can be yeah. go doing an implant. I think, I think a lot of people would say that. They would say, I don't have time to carry on a conversation. I need to get out of that room as fast as possible. Right. So when you go in and buy a Maserati, does the guy spend one minute with you or is he going to no. spend all afternoon? No, they, they, they spend a lot of time with you. <laughs> well, then, why aren't we doing the same thing? You know, she's got ten, twenty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 worth of work, $100,000 worth of work. You can't, there was one guy that was, this is a true story came in, he was homeless. Homeless guy living in the back by my mall. I, I was gonna just do stuff for free. He goes, no, look, I'm sick of toothaches. I just wanna get rid of this stuff. I treated them like a regular patient. He had $28,000 worth of work to do in the bottom and all on four on top. Um, what, 60 grand worth of work by the end of the day? Paid for it in full. He was a trust fund kid. Oh, wow. You never know, true story. So treat everybody with respect, take the time and just do things right. And even if they don't have money, you've done the right thing, you'll feel better and you'll be able to produce better throughout the day. I love that. I love, I, um, you know, I, I actually was looking forward to this. I, I purposely didn't follow, ask you any questions at all. This is all, I'm hearing this for the first time, but it's, it's very, it's basic. But it's yep. not. And it's like somehow, somewhere along the line, a lot of us have just kind of shifted to, hey, we need to see more patients. We need to make a bigger 
office. Yeah. We need to take more plans. We need to do all these different things. And, and you kind of figured out fairly early in your career, right? Even though, you know, yeah. 17 years, but you, you practiced for a long time um, that, hey, that's not the life you wanted. And, uh, and it just makes sense. If you do the math, you sit there, and do the math. Uh, no, I love it. Um, I'm definitely going to get your book. Uh, I'm definitely going to look up more of your perio protocol, but for those who are, are watching and they're interested, and I know someone just told me, look, I, I'm going through this. I don't even have a hygienist. I have nothing to lose. Like this person literally told me I have nothing to lose. I was like, yeah, yeah you don't, yeah. you don't, you don't even have a hygienist. You're doing, you're doing what Dr. Ron's saying, but you know what? You're just kind of winging it. Maybe you should talk to him, you know? So for that person who probably wants to talk to you and not wing it and not spend four years figuring out, I think guys, I think I, I think we can all agree. Uh, 90 days sounds like a lot better than four years trying to figure something out. I mean, shoot, if we can get through dental school in 90 days. I'd take that any day over four years. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so Dr. Ron, uh, if they want to learn more, if they want to reach out and, and, and get mentored by you, how do they do it? Okay. So you don't have to hire me for three months. Um, I have got two doctors now. Uh, that want me for a month, and I think they'll be on their way. Other doctors that just are totally lost need me for three months. Um, so it's not it's not that expensive. If you want me, there's I usually charge fifteen hundred dollars just to get a blueprint. Talk to me, get a blueprint, and we'll decide. And then you could take it from there, or you could hire me. For the deal today, I'm going to take fifty percent off that because you asked me on here, and I want to thank you for doing that. 50%. Okay. Yes. So, guys, someone, he just, it's re, this is recorded guys. He's not going to take it back. Now that's for the first five doctors. Okay. So, first five docs I could take on now guys, $750. You know, the income I made, I'm charging nothing for this. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's basically nothing. So uh, if you want my help, I'll be happy to help you. You know, I talk pretty well and I, I communicate well with you. This isn't going to take us much time, but go to pharmaden.net slash calendar and just set up an appointment with me. Yeah. And I'll put that guys, I'll put that in the comments section. Um, now I'm just curious uh, if they, if they hire you on as a coach, as a mentor, and are you going to their practice or are they coming to Florida and meeting up with you? Well, we could do it any way you want. I want to customize. Remember I said, there's a series of questions Sure, yeah. that, that they're going to have to fill out what's important to them because I want to customize um, a practice that's, they're doing the treatment they want, the hours they want, the, where they want to live. I mean, it's not all what I want, it's what they want. Mm -hmm. And if they think it's really important to come out there, I mean, that's fine. Most of this could really be done over the phone, just like tonight, you guys are understanding what I'm saying. I didn't need to physically be in your office. You just need to, me to clarify things for you. So I'll try to cut down on the expenses. You could hire me for five, six grand a month. I mean, it's not outrageously expensive. Um, or you could have me come out there and pay me a hundred, hundred, hundred and a quarter a year. I don't care. It's so, you know, I, 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 I'll tell you what, there's already one doctor that claimed the first spot. He just typed this. He says, I want to be the first one. So Dr. Caviani, um, you know, I, you know where, you know where to find Ron here. So, um, so yeah, definitely. And, and he, he's, he's a great member of this group and I'm sure there's going to be more people typing in here. Oh, Hey, there's a, there's another one there. Uh, man, I tell you what, he knows his stuff. He knows all about scarcity. There you go. Two off the table guys, only three more spots there. So Dr. Ron, I, uh, you know, I really enjoyed this. I really got to Thank learn, you. or you, you know, you brought me back down to uh, memory lane. I'm definitely going to pick your brain now that you've been on here. Good. Um, before we log off here, uh, for everyone that's watching right now, um, and everyone might be in a different stage of their career, they could be someone starting out, they could be someone who's been doing this for a while, and they're on this hamster wheel that never ends, right? I'm sure you've seen people on that. Uh, whether what, Whatever stage in your practice career you're at, Dr. Ron, what is your message to all of them? What is your message? Love your patients and do the best by them. And if you just follow that, you'll love this program because you have the time to give them your best. You're not giving them your best right now. You know that and I know that. Yeah, yeah. That's some real talk right there, right? When you're, when you're doing a procedure and you're supposed to concentrate on the patient and you're like, oh, where am I going next? Right. Gosh, can you, you know, think about like, if you were, if we were getting some kind of surgery, would we want our uh, surgeon to be like, Oh, who's calling me over there? 
you know, in the middle of your surgery, right? So um, I didn't think about that until you kind of laid it out like that. You made me kind of embarrassed thinking about that, you know? Good. So that's exactly what I wanted to do with everybody yeah. out there that's yeah. listening to this. You should be embarrassed. You're yeah. a professional and not acting like a professional. Yeah. You were yeah. you were put here, gone through dental school, and in your heart you want to help people, and you're not helping them, and you know that. Yeah. This is a way that you could actually go back to your roots, feed your soul, help people, and make a great living. I love it. I love it, Dr. Ron. Thank you so much for jumping on, guys. Thank you. Um, he, he gave a deal. I didn't even need a loan for it. He just came with a deal there. Uh, just 50% off of this great coaching program uh, for the first five dentists and uh, two people already claimed it guys. So there's only three more spots. I'm going to put uh, the, uh, in the comments uh, how to get a hold of Dr. Ron here, as well as uh, the link to get his book. I'm going to sign up for the book. Maybe we'll do like a book club and bring the author back on and he can answer some questions. We can pull out all the chapters and ask some questions there. But uh, Dr. Ron, thank you so much for jumping on. I appreciate it. And I have a feeling that we're going to bring you back on a lot more in the future. Yeah, I think you and I are going to be talking again. All right, guys, take care. We'll talk to you all soon.